Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special episode, uh, because we don't exclusively review stuff all the time like this, aside from my Avengers, Avengers Infinity War, and Endgame, uh, and a slight Once Upon a Time in Hollywood one, uh, me and Vass What's up? are going to be doing a Joker spoiler review. There are spoilers in this. There's going to be a lot of them. Um... Not that this movie has like much for spoilers. There's probably maybe two major ones that yeah. you can say that are like, I would have loved to see that in the theater. Mm-hmm. But either way, we want to keep it spoiler free. I, mean, I mean, sorry, we want to do the spoilers here and let you know that there are spoilers. So I'm going to say one more time, spoilers ahead. Um, also, this week we're not going to be releasing our regular show, so myself, Vast, and Anthony can't talk about it. Because I will be in Vegas. Uh, And I'll be releasing a special episode called Life in Hip Hop, which I did with a friend of mine, uh, Robert Bailey. It was super awesome. Him and I got to catch up. We've been friends since high school. And it's kind of one of those friendships that, um, you know, as the years go on, we keep running into each other. And it's like we kind of pick up where we left off. So that was a really, really fun and super insightful. We get super deep on that. Um, And again, we talk about some hip hop. That's why it's called Life and hip hop, but we're here to talk about Joker, uh, some housekeeping stuff. We are a proud associate and affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network Network, and um, and the the network is sponsored by Connexus Credit Union. And uh, you know, go to hashtag Money Talk or ConnexusMoneyTalk.ca, and you can talk to them about all your financial needs to get you set up right for the new year even though it's not really the new year but it's coming up quicker than it was four months ago all right joker yep. directed by todd phillips also co-written by todd phillips starring joaquin phoenix zazzy beats um hold on let me pull up the imdb come on come robert, on robert De Niro. dante dante per- Pereira olsen uh, Robert De Niro, of course, Mark Marin, like small cameo, pretty mm-hmm. much. Brett Cullen, mm-hmm. Francis Conroy, good good cast, all around really good cast, plus yeah. a bunch of other people um, that you've probably seen around. What's cool about this is aside really from Robert De Niro and Joaquin Phoenix, like they're prominent, obviously. Yeah, but it's not like you. It's not. I wouldn't say a stack cast, but every cast no. member in here and everybody's roles mm-hmm. are so good. Everything everything worked out exactly how it needed to, and yeah, those people fit in perfectly. So let's start it off. Go for it. First of all, did you like the movie? I did. Did you love the movie? Uh, I don't know if love. I, I, I really liked it. I don't know. Love is a strong word. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed it. Like It was a mess with you on a lot of levels, and I read all you see some people's reviews and theories and stuff like that, and that messed me up even more. I'm like, oh, okay, so... Did the, th- th- did the theory spoil anything for you going in? No, I read them after. Oh, sorry. After. Yeah, yeah, okay. post, yeah, post yeah, yeah. kind post. of thing. No, no. Um, and like some stuff I was like, I was on track, and other stuff I was like, oh, I was way off, like way over my head. But overall, I really enjoyed it. It was eerie. Uh but yeah, the standouts obviously, of course, is Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal. Unbelievable. And honestly, I really enjoyed the score. Unbelievable. So those two things obviously are top of the list for sure, but they seem to stand out the most in my opinion. Like the yeah. the music set the mood. You knew something was coming up, but then it just, the way it worked out is great. Yeah. You know what's the, funny about this one is that, first of all, I loved it. Okay. Like I actually loved this yeah. movie. Um, actually, yeah, I, it, this is the, one of those things where it's like, I love this film, film. Oh, yeah. Um, when we talked about on the episode previously yep. called the wokes on you, yep. which if you didn't get it, it's a playoff, the jokes on you, because we talked about Todd Phillips comments on the woke culture and stuff yep. like that. You can definitely tell there was a lot of that in this. Mm-hmm. Now he's had some backlash from it. Some warranted. I sent you guys a thing on Mark Maron's comments today, which was actually, you know, I get where he's coming from because there have been some really great comedies that have come out. Yep. Right. And I mentioned on the show that maybe it's just him trying to not get involved in all of that in case he says something he's, wrong. He's playing it t- too safe, in my too opinion. Safe, yeah. I think he's just worried too much. I'm like, dude, just make your thing. Look at Taika Waititi. He's making a, a, a comedy about Hitler. Well, and he's one of the people that have spoke out against Todd Phillips' comments. He's like, 
he made it happen. And I'm like, Todd Phillips, I think, is a worthy director to do whatever he pleases at this point kind of thing. Like, he can... Right now, yeah. He could definitely do it. Unless he unless he fucks up and uh, goes crazy with his comments and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't see him having trouble doing work. Um, yeah. I think there is a little bit of just him seeing what... Like, we talked about some things that have happened yeah. or whatever. It seems like he's laid that all out in this film. Mm-hmm. It seems like... And that's just one interpretation based on his comments. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix is unbelievable in yeah. this. And he's always been a good actor. Like mm-hmm. a, he's one of been the top actors that people always forget. Then he does a role and everyone's like, oh mm-hmm. man, you were you've always been good. He's kinda he doesn't do too many anymore mm-hmm. as much as he used to, but uh he has like obviously he was in Gladiator, he played Commodus. And you know what? That was a really good role. It was good, yeah. and yet it I don't think it actually gave him the major range. I don't know. I might have it wrong, but it didn't give him anything crazy other than he playing a, the villain. He was a petulant child, but like yeah. a villain, like yeah. start to finish kind exactly. of thing. Exactly. Uh, her. Her. Was, okay, uh, I never very saw her. Movie. I heard that was good. Uh, the Master was really Master. good. That was with Philip uh, He was in We Own the Night, was he not? Yes, he was. And yeah. that was with Mark Wahlberg and... Uh, that was good. Yeah, uh, that was a really good one too. Yeah, he did uh, Inherent Vice, which I haven't seen. Mm-hmm. He's done quite a bit of like he's, he's always he's, been working. He's selective though. He's For sure. definitely selective. I don't know if he does like Broadway stuff or anything like that, but either way, this is definitely I would say his top performance easily. This is my favorite performance. He's ever yeah, one hundred. So again, I haven't seen her, but apparently that was very well done as well. Yeah, For a being, lot of people liked it. I again, I haven't seen it myself. Yeah. Um, I know that yeah. a lot of people that have. Yep. Like personal friends of mine that have, they they mm-hmm. loved it, and I'm like, I get that. It yeah, was, it was the one with Scarlett Johansson, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yes. A sensitive, soulful man living by writing. Nope. Oh yeah, he falls uh, falls in love with an operating system. Yeah. That was uh with Scarlett Johansson in it. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, his best performance easily, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that they're already talking about, uh, that they're doing a second one. Yeah, I don't know if it warranted one. I th- I was under and it like doesn't need one. It doesn't need one. It is what it is. Past this point, we already know the rest of the Joker thing. However, I don't know. Do you want to go through the film or just pick and choose kind of thing? Like, how do you want to run this thing? I know you like the structure better. So I do. I really don't care. Beginning. Yeah, sure. Go so, for it. I like the fact that it starts off right away yeah like I, it, we, we and by right yeah. away i mean like we're not watching him as a teenager there's no montage there's for no nothing. sure he is arthur fleck working as a clown yeah and he's putting on his makeup mm-hmm. and that opening scene alone yeah like affected me mm-hmm. there's so much in this that affected me just watching it yeah um and i think a lot of it is because of the, the, the deliberate filmmaking mm-hmm. where sorry it was it was deliberate filmmaking where they held on in a lot of moments. Yeah, they draw they draw out, they draw yeah. in, and they held there. Like when he was doing the things with his face. Yeah, that you saw in the trailers. Yeah, that's right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And then they they when they bring it back, you see that single tear from the makeup. Mm-hmm. Right, it falls down, and like this is what he has to do. It's forcing that smile every yeah. single time, and the way that the makeup looked, yeah. like it, it looked like his face was rubber. Yeah, they did. It was it was it was a really like the texture of his face looked Mm -hmm. so crazy. Well, it depends what kind of paint they use, I guess. That's true. Could have been different style of paint at the time. Who knows? But But you you're immediately in his world, and Mm -hmm. you're immediately in seeing how he sees himself, which is why they started off with a mirror. And and a little bit for me, like you said, they they held on to those those uh, for dramatic effect. It felt. Like it slowed down quite a bit, and I was like, "We're sitting here, like, hey, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next?" I was more in anticipation for the next scene, like, "How are we going to get to his progression?" Like, you yeah. see him as the broken person that he is, and dealing with what he's doing, even in those first few scenes alone, and then, then it well, goes from there. And that's what's cool about it. So it, it jumps directly from that to him dancing. Yeah. So we're going from a guy struggling just to put a smile on, mm-hmm. and then he goes into his dancing. Mm-hmm. With where the guy's playing the piano, he's flipping the sign around and everything like yeah. that. And then they show that scene that they showed in the trailers where the kids grab the sign yep. and beat the shit out of him. Like he's chasing them down yeah. because, you know, he wants to get his sign back, right? Yeah. And what they beat the shit out of him, and it's hard. Mm-hmm. Like, and it was a good plant for later. Yeah. Right? Well, the, like they only showed him getting his ass kicked twice, yes. if I remember correctly. Like yeah. really getting his ass kicked by yeah. more than one person. Yeah. 
and both of them were transition moments. Mm-hmm. And what I felt like in this is that they just, I'm pretty sure you can watch this thing 50 times, kind of like when I watched Breaking Bad, yeah. and you just see small little transitions here and there, yeah. small little compromises that he makes. For his morality. Yeah, like for, or lack of morality. Like yeah. he takes the the immoral dis- like choice. Yeah. And, and well, he, in this one, it seems like he's suppressing it as much as he can. Oh, yeah. In a way just to fit in. Yeah. Well, he I don't think he knows he's capable of what he does. You know what I mean? That's that, I th- yeah. so it's not that he's holding back, it's more so that he doesn't know he's capable of it until right. the instant happens. Right. Well, and so, that's and I mean, we're going to yeah, going down the way. Is, yeah. Go, going down the road, I think that is what that turning point is where mm-hmm. behind the curtain before he goes out to the Murray show. What's it called? is that the Murray the uh, Yeah. Phil Murray? Yeah, or, or Murray something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me just find it again. I should just keep it mm-hmm. on this fucking page. Uh, who's Robert De Niro's character? Frank Murray? No, he calls him Murray like by his first name. Uh, Robert De Niro, Joker. Every, some, whoever's listening, oh, yeah. it's like screaming out the name. It's this, you fucks. Yeah. Um. Anyways. Yeah, we'll get to there. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Before he goes on the show, yeah, he's gone. I think that's another thing where he, re- like, realizing his potential as he goes towards mm-hmm. it. Because, you know, a- as his character progresses throughout things, he is, like you said, he's becoming more and more realized as the version of himself that we ultimately see. Yeah. Which do you buy the thing that because this is I'm buying the thing that that's not the real he's not the real Joker, but he does spawn potentially. Yeah, he's the reason why the real Joker comes about. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, which I love. I think that's unbelievable mm-hmm. because Joker is a state of being as opposed to an actual person. Mm-hmm. It's like in Spartacus where they're like Spartacus isn't the person. Spartacus is the ideal. Yeah, and he's the ideal of the clown prince of darkness. Yeah. Right, he is the embodiment of the underground. He is the embodiment of the downtrodden and the disenfranchised. Yeah, and you see that throughout this whole movie. Mm-hmm. And it's the beauty is, is that you can already tell that all like life has kicked him in the ass. Yeah, and it's compounded. Mm-hmm. And we're meeting him right before at the twilight of or the infancy of his full transition. Yeah. Um, okay, so he gets his ass kicked. What a great shot, too, where it pans out, mm-hmm. and then it blurs the rest of it, mm-hmm. and it's like a, a total isolation. Yeah. Like, it felt, a lot of times, I felt like he, the way they shot it, aside yeah. from being deliberately uh, focused on mm-hmm. something for a while, mm-hmm. they also deliberately shoot him to look, at least for me, and I might be reading too much into this, but look isolated from the rest of the world as much as possible. It could be. I didn't pay attention to the visual on that scene per se, but I did notice he's proper technique covering the head and groin. So <laughs> good on him. <laughs> well, and which tells you this yeah. isn't the first time this has happened. Exactly. So regular occurrence in a way. Yeah. Who knows? But. Um, and then after that, you saw it last night, right? So you're yep. probably a little bit more familiar with the little progression. Bit, yeah. uh, um, gets his ass kicked. Yep. I think that's when he. And then he moves and he goes to the. He walks home. We, we see that first. We see the first trek home that he does kind yeah. of drudging through mm-hmm. drudging through hell yeah essentially his own hell just to get to the only quasi safe space he has yeah with the that stairs though that, like that that's the long one he's just dragging his feet you know he's like hurt and stuff like that so you know what the best part about that is mm. and um this is one of those few moments where i actually picked up on it right away mm. Because I didn't listen to any reviews. I haven't seen any reviews. Yeah. I haven't seen a single article or anything like that. The only thing I saw were Josh Brolin's comments and Michael Moore's. And I'm not a big Michael Moore fan, but he yeah. had a really good comment. You only see him going up the stairs twice. Yeah. It's dark. Mm-hmm. He is he's slouched. He is beaten. Yeah. The, the, the day itself beats him. And you can tell this is what he goes through every day. Because it's not even like they they, they have a shot of him early on before he goes up those steps and he looks at it and he goes like some other ones would do right like just to drive it home that he drudges the stairs Mm -hmm. at this point he's been in hell for so long yeah that he just goes because he knows this is what he has to do Mm -hmm. Uh, i think in the, the thing in his book where it says people act 
uh, people say that you don't know how to act uh, or expect you to act when you are or something like that. Um, I don't remember that quote. Anyways, you go. Oh, so what I found is it wasn't until his ascension that they actually showed those stairs again on the way down. Yeah, exactly. Like stepping out, fully realized who he is. And he's dancing. Mm -hmm. Like there was something so beautiful about that thing. And when I realized it or what I got out of it was just like, that's fucking genius. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a full transformation from a caterpillar to a fucking moth Mm -hmm. not even a butterfly after what he does yeah um so yeah that was that Mm -hmm. those stairs man that dredge home was just unbelievable like there was something about it that just they focused on it enough they showed you the path Mm -hmm. they showed you his his that bleak hallway and not just physical hallway just that bleak the bleakness of his life and It doubled up as showing you the world he lives in all the time. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. The the court, the street, where and they've already set up that Gotham's being, you know, overrun by over rich people and all the poor yeah. people or whatever, right? Being pushed, but you feel it. Yeah. And what's really funny is it's juxtaposed with the bright cinematography. Mm-hmm. Like aside from at night and some of those scenes in the stairs, it's actually a pretty bright film Overall, in terms yeah. of the way they shot it. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of scenes that have that greenish orange hue yeah and you see those like some of the some uh flares from the camera or from light flares and stuff in the Mm -hmm. camera and everything Mm -hmm. uh but that's it's just so it's so weird how it plays with that Mm -hmm. yeah and then he gets home yeah and you see kind of his life with his mother and you know he's taking care of her and stuff like that and then they watch their favorite show and then you get a the first little uh kind of illusion or you know fantasy or daydream that he has where he's on the show he speaks up and he the De Niro's character embraces him and all that stuff and then he snaps out of it kind of thing right and it was you know what's really funny about the way they did those because they did that a couple times one of them is the big reveal yeah big spoiler Mm -hmm. but maybe because the editing was so sh- like was it was sharp in a way that you're here mm-hmm. now you're here mm-hmm. now you're here now you're here and for a second the way he panned into it it just happened so naturally that for a second you kind of forget wait a minute like how is this happening until it pulls you back yeah because it lasted long enough that i'm like is this a memory like did he have a memory of this like mm-hmm. I, I don't i don't get that mm-hmm. but yeah and de niro as the host he was great. He oh, yeah. It's De Niro. He's great. Mm-hmm. But it's cool seeing him like that. He doesn't... Yeah, that's the thing. Like, everyone expects him to stick to his genre and stuff. Like, he doesn't care. He did the already dir- Dirty Grandpa. That's true. Uh, He's at the point where he just does Or whatever. Bad Grandpa, one of the two. One of the two. Dirty, yeah. And he gets paid bank. Exactly. Bank. Um, one thing we did miss was his first interaction with the social worker. Was that before he goes home? I want to say that intercut with that, or was it's it got to be somewhere in between? But either way, his first interaction, you see, like Murray Franklin, Murray Franklin. There That's you know. who Robert De Niro is. The Murray Franklin yeah. show, yeah. So it's <laughs> almost right, Pretty just close, reversed. Close, close, close. <laughs> Franklin Murray, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. you you see that he is trying to go for help, yeah. And it's a government program, right? Yes, because he was already admitted. That's what, like, he was already uh, committed to an asylum at one point. So this is, like, post now social worker working with him on his psyche and all that stuff, keeping his journal. Right. And that's really the first glimpse of what he says in the in the journal and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Um, I just found this w- uh, website here that says mm-hmm. um, the best movie quotes from here. If I can find it. Yeah. Uh, is it just me or is it getting crazier out there? That's where he has that quote. Yeah. And the social worker is saying, yes, mm-hmm. certainly. It, it is certainly tense. People are upset. They're struggling, looking for work. These are tough times. How about you? Have you been keeping up with your journal? Mm-hmm. And then that's when he shows it. Yeah. And then she goes through it and he's got like naked uh, pictures in there. Yeah. Um, but he also has a bunch of writing, which kind of like had a seven vibe. Remember, uh, yeah. And I already mentioned, like I watched it recently, which was really even funnier because yeah, yeah he's like sitting there with his journal and it's just scribbled of everything. Yeah. Like his thoughts and everything like that. Yeah. Also, the movie made me want to smoke like a motherfucker. Holy shit. It's because they could smoke anywhere. <laughs> they were smoking everywhere. Yeah. Like he's sitting in the, he's sitting, spoiler alert, in the hospital with his mom at one, yeah. one point and he's having a cigarette right there. I was like, Fuck the 70s, man. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Because it's the 70s, 
it, they, you, you, it's a different time where mental health, nobody knows a fucking thing about back then. Yeah. They kind of, they don't dismiss it fully, but they, they usually just like, okay, you're going to Arkham kind of thing. Well, they, it, so it is a dismissal, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And we learned that he wasn't in Arkham already. Like he yeah. wasn't in an asylum. Yeah. And which we then learned later uh, is that his mom was in that asylum as well. Yep. And there's this whole thing about his mom and Thomas Wayne. Yeah, which gets brought up in that first when they first watch it, or the second time they watch. Because she keeps getting him to check the mail. Yeah. And it's like, he keeps repeating the same thing over and over again for mm-hmm. his mom. What I what I thought was going to happen mm-hmm. is his mom being more of a... I mean, she was a linchpin for his transition. Sure. But I thought it was going to be a case of, like, when she gets sick, Mm -hmm. it wasn't like his whole world was distraught because it was already fucked up to begin with. Yeah, it was more of a... But it it just... Say as a relief for him? It almost... It was almost that last thing he needed. Yeah. So he can move forward. Yeah. Which is also really interesting from a psychological standpoint where you have... Mm -hmm individuals who it's almost like their parents are actually the ones holding them back. Yeah. Like they don't actually become fully realized until they step out on their own or move out. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's, it's in another thing because the damage has already been done to him. Yeah. But his mom keeps writing letters to Thomas Wayne. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's hoping that she's going to get a letter back. Yeah. And we don't really know the full extent until later on. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, after that, we move on to the, uh, the therapist scene. Yep. And, I loved how I loved how exhausted the therapist looked or the mm-hmm. social worker looked. Yep. And I also loved how he called her out too. He's like, "You don't yeah. care." <laughs> yeah. He, it's it's like you are just as bad as the rest of the people out there. The only difference is I had this feeling of like he almost resented her more mm-hmm. because at least the other people just ignored him completely. Yeah. Where she's pretending to care. Yeah. And it was What's funny is there's not that much dialogue in this movie, comparatively. Uh, like there, there's, there's yeah, there is and there isn't. There's dialogue for sure. Yeah, but there's a lot of pauses in between the dialogue. They take oh, their time with it. Big sparse. Yeah, they let it breathe mm-hmm. and they let it sit with you. Yeah, which I which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, where to next? Well, after the first night with his mom, that you see, they all you know, and he has his first fantasy and whatever. Next, he goes yes. back to work, yeah. and he gets in shit. Because of uh, the sign, and he's like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, but it broke." And like, because he am got shit to do with it. Yeah, because they're basically like freelance clowns, kind of thing, doing yeah. whatever. Uh, and that's when his coworker gives him the gun. Yes, which right away, you know, that guy's sketchy and shady, and something's gonna happen because of that. And well, whatever. what's what's interesting is that it wasn't, it wasn't, and the reason I'm saying that is because it's his fault how it ended up playing out. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah, but he's <clears throat> almost childlike in a way. Yeah, and. Do we get the bus scene before or after this? I think we get it after. We get it far after because he goes to the children's hospital and that's when the gun falls out. So he gets a second chance. No, not the train scene. I'm talking about the bus scene with the ch- little with the little uh, oh, child. That would probably be. That would almost have to be like his going back to work that day. Was, was that going back? That to was work going that back to work that day. Yeah. So before, th- so th- okay. So then before he does that, yeah, he goes. On this train. Mm -hmm. And this is where we get, and this is kind of our first time of seeing him really in a public space Mm -hmm. as Arthur Fleck. Mm -hmm. Because we see him, aside from his social worker, which is just him and his social worker. Yeah. His path home is by himself. Mm -hmm. Have we ran into Zazie Beats yet? Uh, I have to say it would probably be like the day he got the gun and he goes home. I think that's when he... Is that what it was, I think that's when he first sees her and... And that kind of stuff, and then whatever yeah. they have their interaction have and their stuff interaction. like that. Um, at first, though, I didn't think much of the guy giving him the gun in the sense that he's the bad guy, because it was Arthur's fault for bringing it into the child's hospital. Which oh, for sure, no, that I'm not blaming the guy. The guy's just sketchy in nature. You could tell oh, he has that kind of persona and stuff like that. It's like, okay, something's off about this guy, regardless of what is inflicted beyond that. Randall is the guy's name. Yeah. And then we see the there's the also the other guy that kind of um the short dude. The short dude Gary. Yeah. So he's kind of the guy that um 
I guess he's like a messenger back and forth, and I'm I'm guessing he also works with the organization as well. Yeah, like they're like clowns for hire. Yeah, also exactly. Brian Callen was in there at one point, which is funny. Yeah, you could hear his voice, right? Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. he was in he was in the scene before he gets fired. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what you also see in this before the guy gives him the gun is his body. Yeah, oh, he's bruised and beaten and not, skinny. Not just that, how yeah. fucking skinny he is. And did yeah. you notice that his left shoulder blade looked like mm-hmm. it winged out more than his right one? Mm-hmm. I like, wonder if that's like a Joaquin Phoenix actual thing yeah. or if he did it for the Joker character. Yeah. I, I mean, or like you mean like he's just lifting it and keeping yeah. it lifted like that? Like his body just looks distorted. Actually, he his body looked exactly... Kind of like what Christian Bale. What did oh, he? Oh, the machinist. Yeah, that's it. Christian Bale's was definitely skinnier, way skinnier, and deformed. Like he had that those breaks, and like you could tell, like the way yeah. his body moved, it but moved the same. It almost looked like that, but only adding on like five pounds. Exactly. So not much different, but yeah. I could the movements and stuff. I'm like, okay, that's Christian Bale's portrayal in that yeah. machinist movie, and that really. I think that also helped with, you know, how I mentioned before where his face looked like it was rubbery and stuff. Yeah. His face was so skinny yeah. and it accented his nose. Mm-hmm. And the Joker's always had a pretty, like at least in the comics and Prom- the oh, yeah, and it's stuff, prominent, he's always yeah. had a prominent nose and it almost felt like his nose was such a, like so much bigger because the rest of his body was so skinny. Yeah. Like Joaquin Phoenix has an interesting face to begin with. Like he's mm-hmm. one of those people like you just recognize, right? Yeah. But because he was so skinny, all of his... All of his skeletal f- features mm-hmm. were just so much more accented, like yeah. cheeks and everything, and then the skin kind of over the cheeks, like all this excess skin from all the weight he's lost because he's mm-hmm. not eating or anything like yeah. that. Then you see his body, which is even m- skinnier, and the way he walks mm-hmm. is so like it's almost like the reverse of what his dancing is like. Mm-hmm. It's almost like he's just naturally contorted and awkward. Yeah. And in a way to kind of, he's trying to escape into his own body because he doesn't understand, like like he mentions to his therapist and it says in the trailer, all I have are negative thoughts. Yeah. And it's like that negativity is just wrapping him more and more. Yeah. Um, so then he gets shit for the sign. Gets shit for the sign. He gets another chance and we see the cutscene, whatever. He he has an interaction with Zazie Beats' his character. Well, he, this is now we're at the bus, though. So he's in the bus because yeah. then we notice that this is where we get his actual because he laughed I think at the he did his um, signature laugh in the social worker's office. He did his laugh and then he also did it I think when the mom gave him shit for playing with the kid like and he wasn't doing anything. That's the bus scene I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was playing with the kid and like the mom got pissed and yeah. then he he has that the condition basically says that he laughs at inappropriate things or at times when it's not you know when normal people wouldn't. Anthony sent it to us. Yeah. Uh, it's an actual, the condition is called. Yeah. Where did he send it? I can't fucking work my phone when I'm looking for shit. Pathological laughter, uh, mm-hmm. the pseudo bulber effect. That's the one where it's uncontrollable laughter. Like, just, yeah. and, and it's the opposite of how he's feeling. Yeah. And so it's, that's, it's I think trigger. that's what he had. So that's yeah. why he had the card. He gave it to her. She didn't care. She was still freaked out and pissed off or whatever. And he but just I, couldn't stop. So it's like, it's a mixture between like hysterical laughter for joy slash thing. Mm-hmm. But it's also, uh, he's uh, laugh crying because he's trying to contain it as well. Well, it's also a, a trigger. It's triggered by his awkwardness, right? Yeah. Like fear, mm-hmm. uh, awkwardness, feeling bad kind of thing. Like when other people just kind of like snap. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a little version of snapping throughout yeah. where he just does that uncontrollable laughter. Mm-hmm. And it, it's obviously triggered by moments of like all he was doing was making that kid laugh. Yeah, exactly. And the mom was so freaked out by him mm-hmm. that it's like or just looking like don't don't do that with my kid. Yeah. Right. And then he's just like, I didn't do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. Um like it's not my fault. Like I just yeah. wanted to make him smile, right? Yeah, like yeah. my mom's been telling me that I've been put on this earth to make people laugh. This yeah. is the assumption, and he's gone his entire life, and no one seems to have realized it. Mm-hmm. And he keeps trying to get people to see him or see that no, like I'm here to make people laugh. Yeah, which doesn't get does, does it. What are you playing with? Sorry, dime. <laughs> doesn't get shown <laughs> until the comedy club scene. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. But man, that laugh, dude. Mm-hmm. And it gets more and more and more throughout, like and and it just seemed like 
just when it, it was about to be too much, mm-hmm. like like you know, from a directing standpoint, you could have been like, okay, you could have toned it back like two seconds. Yeah. Then it cuts, mm-hmm. and it makes you just feel super awkward, like you're one of the people around him when he's yeah. laughing. Mm-hmm. And when they pan out after he's he keeps laughing, mm-hmm. everyone just ignores him, and then it keeps panning out and out and out, and all you notice is how isolated he is. Mm-hmm. And so he's laughing by himself. So even in, in a hysterical moment like that, that he can't control, yeah. it's an illness he has, mm-hmm. it means nothing to the outside world. Mm-hmm. right? And it's a, it's a world, like Gotham has turned into a place that ignores things like this. Yeah. And they haven't even seen what Gotham really has to offer. Exactly. Which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Then I believe he does his he does his trek home around that, that then, and then he meets Zazie Beats. Yes. Yeah. Uh, meets her there. Yeah. The gun thing, and that's then it. Then she does the because the the building sucks. Yeah. You know, or right? even the kid was bogging her too. Right. Uh, she said something about oh this building sucks, and then the kid said oh the building sucks kind of thing. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then he lo- she looks at him and does the the gun thing and stuff, and then he does it, but. As a as a clown, kind yeah. of like the clown version of that after, yeah, right. Um, and this is where we really get into it. Like this mm-hmm. was really cool. Yeah, her her parts in this mm-hmm. were so great. Like I, we all loved her from Deadpool too. I think. Yeah. I mean, I did. And but in this, it's like I don't know. It's it's almost like Margot Robbie in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where mm-hmm. she doesn't have a lot, but yeah. she's so integral to this. And mm-hmm. I would say. Because, as I said, spoilers, she their relationship doesn't exist. Yeah. But they did so great with her. Other than the first interaction. Other than the first one, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, they have nothing. And, and because, really, all we got... Did we get the scene where he kissed her first, or did they go on... Did she come to his door and ask him out first? I don't. I think we got the the where he goes. I think that's after when he shoots, and then she comes by when he shoots the guys, something right? like that. Because then he goes right. back to work, gets fired. For the he gun. gets fired over the phone for that. Remember, and that's the right. night he takes the bus. Yes, and the, everything the subway. The subway. Sorry. So it's like he says the thing. The next day he goes back to work. Mm-hmm. He does the clown thing with the kids. God falls out, and it's like you right away know he's fucked. He's done. <laughs> For sure, and the, right. the thing was, like, it seemed like he's good at what he does in a way, like just being a for clown. sure. Like I, the kids look like they were that's having his, a good time. That's his. Uh, that's where he can be normal. Yeah, it's that mask that. Yeah, you know, it's that for the we all wear masks, metaphorically speaking, yeah, from the mask, from the mask. Yeah, um, where he he's he can be somebody else and it be acceptable. Yeah. And he's got this gun. He fires it off in the house. That was really funny. Oh yeah, that freak. <laughs> that got me. Yeah. Uh, and it was also weird because he was. He was watching TV, and I think it was Murray Franklin's show again. No, he's watching some or, other. Was some he? Other was he show. doing the? Um, he was dancing with his mom. I think he just general. He was dancing like he was doing his. Con- there was the one where he was dancing with his mom, and I don't know if that was no. later. But we also noticed that he does take care of his mom. Overall, but, yeah. And and there's a part of him that obviously does care for her, mm-hmm. but for it sure. wasn't like I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Like I thought it was going to be something like he is devoted to her. Mhm. Where his turn on her when he finds out the secret. Yeah. Specifically the secret with, that involves Thomas Wayne, which isn't really a real secret to begin with. Yeah. It's just her psychotic lies. Yeah. And how she's crazier than him. Mhm. Like he almost doesn't hesitate. Yeah. Like he could just he just stops, but um he did that one thing where he was kind of talking like the girl talking to him and mm-hmm. him talking to the girl. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but then there was a thing with, yeah, and I think that was a scene with a gun and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. it fires and his mom's like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm and just watching like, a war movie. And, and, yeah, and but all of a sudden, like, he just turns into a child. Like, he goes from, yeah, he goes from just allowing himself to kind of freely move mm-hmm. to all of a sudden cowering and whatever when his mom asks what's going on. Like, he's he's very childlike in his, yeah. in his ways. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, we get the subway scene now. This is it. This is it. Like, he gets the call that he got fired. He's like, you're Mm -hmm. done. Uh, He's packing his stuff, Mm -hmm. I think. Because we saw Thomas Wayne on the TV, too. That's what led her to go go 
what you know like, what i think he the we see get the subway scene that night and then he picks he grabs the stuff the next day because that's where he starts having his confidence remember that was his trigger right but the he, thing is those guys had his stuff to begin with they were threw it around before they kicked his ass no, I know, no, no, no. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, he had his clown outfit from the from the children's hospital. Yes, and then uh, yeah, so bugging him stuff like that, and he just slapped. And that's that second thing we're we're seeing again that so first these these douchebags are bugging this woman on there. Yeah, uh, he's like throwing chips or whatever Doritos or candy or whatever yeah. at her, and then he just starts his laughter because yeah, Joan all of a sudden it triggers right, and yeah. then these guys are um. Were, were coming and they're singing at him and I forget what they were singing. They're singing some sort it, of song. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a like I know the song, mm-hmm. but I forget what the song is. Like I, when I heard it, I was just like, I know what the song is. And then they kick his ass just like those kids kicked his ass. And that was the other thing too. It's like they were. I think he mentioned that they were kids that took the sign. So he's like, well, I couldn't have done anything. Like they were just kids or whatever. When yeah. that Randall guy was like, you got to protect yourself. And. Then, you know, as mm-hmm. they're kicking his ass, he unleashes. And it's pretty brutal. Like, especially the one, the the first fat guy mm-hmm. that um, is running away. And you can see the blood running down his leg as he's trying to escape. Oh, from yeah, the yeah, subway. yeah, yeah. But he blows the one guy in the head, the main, the, the leader, I guess, the yeah. guy that initiated. Mm-hmm. Then he shoots the other guy. And then he's chasing this kid down. And it's, it was crazy to watch. Like, it, it was really... It wasn't that bloody, but it was no. super visceral mm-hmm. in in how just he just did it. It happened quick too. Head, the other guy was down, the other guy in the leg, and then yeah. The only thing they had was that thing where he didn't know when to leave or not. Yeah, and like yeah, yeah. He's, he's like pointing the gun out, and the guy looks in the sub, and he's there. He's trying to avoid it, and then he runs, and then he goes right after him, yep. and like. As he's he shoots him the one time, and as he's crawling up the stairs, he shoots him again, and then shoots him some more, and then he just bolts. And this is where we get, I think, the first shot of I don't know how he did this run, mm-hmm. but his run is outstanding. Now, did he have clown feet on? Like, yeah, in that scene, yeah, he still had his clown feet. So and that would on. make sense why he was running like that. But he yeah. also run, ran like that in the asylum when he stole those uh, yeah. documents. So he's got this manic run, but it was wild. Especially because now we get the scene in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And it's just him in this bathroom. And what a great shot as he's running through that tunnel. Like you see it in the trailer. Mm -hmm. He's carrying his stuff. He's running like crazy. Yeah. He's still got his makeup on everything. It's just his hair that's there. Yeah. And then gets into that bathroom. Fuck, this scene was awesome. I think it was Send in the Clowns with Frank Sinatra. Send in the Clowns. Yes. Great find. Yeah. And so obviously well known in that verse and clearly appropriate for what was going on there. So Absolutely. All the songs were appropriate. Yeah. There was only one that bugged me. Which one was that? And that was the one when he goes out. It's like da na na hey da na 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 da na Oh yeah, yeah. And the only reason is is because the the score they played after. Yeah. The music they played after when it's slow mo. No, that fit more. No, I'm just saying the. Oh, the other uh, one. Yeah. yeah, it that was the, that was one of the mu- the only music cue that I was just like, eh, yeah, I could have done without this. Yeah, yeah I could. Fair you could have had that song that was playing after that because mm-hmm. it was a beautiful score. Mm-hmm. Like this score was really good. Oh yeah, and I honestly feel like they took samples from the Joker, like from the Dark Knight. I could see that. Like there was there were certain patterns of notes that I heard that seem to be in mm-hmm. the score, mm-hmm. like the oh, the original score. I'll have to listen to it. I've got it saved on Google yeah. Play. I'm going to listen to the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and then yeah. so he does his dance, like a full, this is almost like he's just like, letting. it's go. almost like he's releasing cobwebs, so mm-hmm. to speak. Like he's releasing, kind of breaking out of his cocoon a little bit. Yeah. And and we're in like and then that the the way that they shot it, you saw it in the trailer and you saw it in the poster where it shows him from like that. It it shows up mm-hmm. and you just see enough of his face, but you see the makeup. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so crazy! Oh yeah, it's so good. And his dance is so like, it's an interpretive dance. Yeah, it's really. But it's weird. like it's eerie to watch. Like he's just just like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's it's like every movement he he's not allowed to do throughout the day. Mm-hmm. He lets out there. Yeah. 
Well, it's a, it's a safe place, right? It, yeah, he just does it, and he just does it so naturally, and it's not weird. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Like, we're watching a movie called Joker, right? Yeah. Um, CD underbelly of Gotham. You know, the rich are making money. The poor Thomas mm-hmm. Wayne calls clowns, mm-hmm. right? After the Thomas Wayne thing was after this. Yeah. Because they were reporting on the kids. Yes, I got that wrong yeah. again. Um, fuck, I should have saw it a second time. Should come with you guys. Well, I, I, I saw it last night and I kind of barely remember. But the key points is the fact that like you see his transition. Like the subway scene was a big one. Yeah, he leaves work the next day. Yeah, and like I mean that night he probably watches the sh- show with his mom that he yeah. shoots the kids and then he gets the thing or whatever. Because they have the report or the next the, day. The next the, day, the next night, yeah. yeah. So the next day he goes grabs his stuff and he yeah. tells everyone whatever screw you and he punches out and he just destroys that yeah. clock out thing and after his dance in the bathroom this is where yeah. he goes home and it's like more of that walk like you get that joker walk then mm-hmm. so instead of it being his arthur fleck cowering walk yeah. you get his confident walk going right to her to zazzy beats door knocking on it and planting one right yeah. on her like and i believe this was after she had come to his door because we were surprised yeah. that she knew his name and everything like that yeah right? yeah, yeah, yeah and it started to get really weird for me here, mm-hmm. but only because I didn't know the reveal was coming. Yeah. And this is our biggest spoiler is that the Zazzy Beats thing, like we said, didn't happen. Yeah. But we're watching them. Uh, she, They go out on a date. Yep. Um, it was that comedy night, like his, his night where he was going out. He, they showed that scene where he was going to, uh, where he's watching that other comedian who's yeah. actually a, um, he's actually a regular comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, He did a road tour with mm-hmm. Dane Cook a while back. I forget what the guy's name is. Oh, okay. um, yeah, this was years ago. It's like <laughs> 2006 or seven. Um, but anyways, he's he's actually a really funny comedian. Yeah, and he was watching him, and you can tell these are there were moments like this, and there was one other moment where he was only laughing when the crowd was laughing, but his timing was off because yeah. he didn't know how to in, he doesn't know how to integrate himself in society. Yeah, and it was so cool, and he's sitting there taking notes. Uh, yeah. and, and he's got his little journal and stuff, and he's at a table by himself doing his weird laugh by himself while mm-hmm. everyone else is laughing normally like you yeah. would at a comedy thing. Yeah, And it was so, again, really cool. As they're shooting across the comedy club, you don't really notice him at first. Yeah. And then they just have the light just enough on him, and then it just focuses and focuses and brings him in. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. No, it that was, was great. Really, it was a really great scene. Um, plants uh, the kiss on her, and then we find out that people are looking for this clown. Yep. That shot these kids, mm-hmm. which the underground took as a vigilante yep. rising up against the the boot of the rich. Yeah, because these were prep school kids, basically. These from, were rich kids. Were they prep school kids or like uh, kids of like the Wayne? Like uh, they were working there as like temps oh, kind of thing. Like I think Wayne Tech. Or I whatever, think I think they must have been. A, I can't remember exactly. I think they were affiliated with the Wayne or just part of the rich. Just and famous. They, they were just rich kids. Like they. Yeah. I, what I remember is that they they just said these are three rich kids. Yeah. And they got shot yeah. in Gotham subway in a bad part of Gotham. There you go. So right away they say, well, it's probably the the downtrodden trying to rise up and create this thing, and it's a clown man trying to make a statement and that kind of thing. So which then prompts him to want to run for mayor and stuff like that and calls everyone clowns on top of it. That's the thing. He's calling the poor clowns. Yeah. And, and what's even better about this mm. is that, you know, when you think about it, his son turns into Batman wearing a mask and going around yeah. and he's mocking clowns and wearing a mask and shooting yeah. his kids and stuff like that. Right. Like it's just, it's, there's so much because we all know what the Batman lore is. Mm-hmm. What I really liked is that they actually made Thomas Wayne out to be a dick. Yeah. Not this like philanthropist and loved by all kind of thing. He yeah. Was, yeah, he was an absolute dick and pure rich man kind of thing syndrome. Yeah. And they cast the perfect guy to it because he looks like a dick. Yeah. And it's funny because he played in the Dark Knight series too. Did he? Yeah. He was one of the senator, the cop guy. I think he played one of the two. Well, the, the cop was somebody else. That was in like Dark Knight Rises. The one that ran in with everybody? That was uh, another one. Yeah. It was a different one. Maybe. I have to check. He could have played the senator then. You might be right because they don't they don't really care about the continuity of that right so it has nothing to do with it exactly one, so, one could argue it has nothing to do with it yeah. another thing you can say is that it does have something to do with it yeah. and that it's this actually yeah he was in the dark knight rises yeah yeah yeah, yeah so but it, i like that they made him a dick they also made alfred kind of a jerk but mm-hmm. 
that part was kind of weird. So we're, obviously, yeah. obviously, we're jumping, but whatever. yeah, that doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> no, like, like we're not, doing it in order anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're just trying to piece it together to go. But from yeah, the big the bet. I guess the next big piece is the fact that he finds the letter. And his mom says, oh, like, you're Thomas Wayne's son, and there's this whole thing. And then he goes after the, tries to talk to Thomas Wayne, and his first move is to go to his house, I believe, isn't it? Yes, his first move is his house. And that's where we meet Bruce. So we first see Bruce in, he's riding on the subway, he's got that newspaper, and he cuts it off and puts it in his journal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the second time we see him, he just shows up at his house. And this is what I thought was weird. Wayne Manor, this is the, the, yeah, this is the one part where I was like, this is kind of Mm -hmm. weird, the way they have this set up. Wayne Manor is fucking massive. Mm-hmm. How did he manage to be on the side where Bruce was and following him kind of towards he gets to the front door? Yeah. It didn't seem like there was a gate up there too. So why did he bother going from the front door when he could have jumped the fence? It seemed like he was able to. I Again, he wasn't trying to be a complete intruder. He just wanted to talk to him at that point, right? So I'm, he I'm was... just saying just the way that that scene's yeah. set up. It'd yeah. be different if, for me, it would be different if he got dropped off by a cab or yeah. walked all the way to Wayne Manor mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then noticed Bruce there and so on and so, like yeah. and, and then it progressed to what it did. Yeah. This was an uncomfortable scene, dude. Very. And you got nothing from the kid who played Bruce, he just, which was, he was just, it was there. just like was is he going to crack a smile? Is he going to play along? Is he just yeah. going to be like what the hell? And then you see Alfred? Yeah. But it yeah, when they start talking it's interesting cuz as soon as he says the name Penny Fleck, he just like uh what? Mm-hmm. He knew right away what it was all about and that yep. kind of stuff. So it's pretty crazy. Like that's a trigger right there. And then I think that's when he finds out, right? That she's she was lying. Well, that's the one inclination because yeah. he tells him that she was oh, mentally ill. Yes. And that, that there that she was psychotic or something yeah. and that she was she was in Arkham. Yeah. Or she was because it is Arkham, right? Arkham Asylum is where yeah, they're yeah, sending yeah. all the patients. Right? Yeah, exactly. Where he was. Exactly. So and then that's when it sets up for him to try to find Bruce Wayne in the bathroom or at a, an event and stuff like that. Uh, Thomas Wayne. Thomas Wayne, yes. That'd Thomas. be weird if he was looking for Bruce Wayne That's in the right. bathroom. Come on, dude. Thomas Wayne. But yes, uh, and it was a benefit, wasn't it? Or no, it was the movies. Yeah. So while, so right now at this point, all of the underground of Gotham is wearing clown masks and yeah. rioting. Uprising, yeah. Okay. And then the rich are in this theater watching a play or watching a movie of sorts or something yeah. like that. And then he dresses up as- It's Chaplin. Well, it was Chaplin. Yeah. Ah, yes. Smart. Movie, uh, yeah. So they're all laughing and stuff. He's wearing yeah. the usher's outfit. Yeah, walks in, kind of looks around, mm. sees Arthur or sees Thomas and Martha Wayne. Yeah, and then follows him to the bathroom. Yeah, and then brings it up. Yeah, he's like, "You're my dad," or whatever, and he's like, "I don't want anything from you. I just want you to notice me." Yeah, and it and that's been the whole thing. Nobody is noticing him, mm-hmm. and the the thing is, is that. It's it's almost it's just setting it up. You don't notice me, mm-hmm. but you will. Yeah. But then we see Thomas Wayne, which I wouldn't say he's a dick here because if I had a stranger come up to me in the bathroom yeah. and just stand there watching, I'd probably freak the fuck out. And if I found out that this is the guy that put his fingers in my kid's mouth, yeah. I would beat the shit out of him. Yep. The fact that he only punched him once as a father, that's kind of a, you know. He held back. He held back big time, <laughs> right? But yeah. he decked them. Oh, yeah. He fucking decked them hard. And yeah. this was kind of like, I think this was the last time he got beat up. Yeah. That was the very last hit he took. Because mm-hmm. I don't remember him yeah. taking another hit from somebody else. Yeah. And then somewhere in between, he can, this is after this, he confronts his mother. Yeah, she's in the hospital. She's already in the hospital because so, yeah, they have a fight about it and yeah. stuff like that. And then they show they show that Zazie Beats is next to him, mm-hmm. which we know that wasn't the case. Um, they had gone on their date. Yeah. And he did the, his comedy thing, which yeah. that's what the third time where we hear the laugh and he's yeah. in public. And this is what sets up the whole Murray yeah. Franklin situation, right? Yeah, exactly. So he tries to do his comedy thing. And it sounds like to us that people are laughing after he has his laughing outburst, but then pulls it together. Yeah, exactly. Clearly terrible at comedy. 100%. Yeah. But it shows, but they did a great job, a clever thing with this, with the the way they shot it because it shows Zazie Beats kind of laughing mm-hmm. like legit like, like, sounds like a legitimate laugh yeah and so all the laughter is in his head yeah right he walks down the street and he's the, she's about to cross the street but he notices the clown mm-hmm. hero yeah uh, article yeah yeah that took down these three rich people because the rich people are looked at as evil yeah right they're not evil these guys are just dicks yeah. just, all these people though are like 
you guys are all like keep stomping on us and keep stomping yeah. on us. And right? she agrees with them. It's like, oh, these guys are heroes. She's the one who agrees with it with the headline. Yeah. So it's and, very and he's interesting. Just using it as a like reinforcing it to himself. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's just it's just brilliant. It's just yeah. so great. And then he goes to Arkham and he finds out about his mom. Mm-hmm. And the orderly there that was helping him, like, he was a nice dude. Like, yeah. He was he was and, and I'm not saying that I didn't expect him not to be a nice dude, but like for a guy working in an insane asylum and, yeah. and talking to a guy like Arthur, because he's a weird fucking dude. Probably picked it up that he's like, okay, this guy should probably be in here too. Yeah. And just handing over documents, like private well, documents that he, he showed him and then he, he showed got him, ripped yeah. off, ripped yeah. away from him because yeah. he like, because Arthur wanted to see them really Yeah, bad. exactly. And and get the truth of it. It was nice that they did the cutback scene though of them talking and then you find out oh, yeah. how he was beaten yeah. and left like... His unattended let him be she was just a psycho yeah, and then yeah. that's when everything clicked in for him he's like what yeah. the f and they did that cool thing where it's like he as he's reading this mm-hmm. after he runs off which again he does that run again that's why i wasn't sure if it was the clown shoes that he had on uh the clowns yeah maybe that, it's a little bit more but that's just how he runs yeah where his like his whole body runs and it's yeah. so like such a weird run mm-hmm. it's so good like yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it it's just so crazy yeah and then yeah, he's reading through it, and it, and it, yeah, it does have that scene where like, and he's off to the side like he's there because mm-hmm. he's reading it because it's just exact notes, right? Yeah. It's recordings or written transcribed recordings, sorry, recordings that were transcribed on paper. Yeah. So he's actually really experiencing this mm-hmm. and seeing it, what kind of psycho his mom actually is, yeah. and how she's lied and how she actually abandoned him, mm-hmm. which was, you know, the, his turn was quick on that. Oh yeah. You know, he was hurt. He was hurt that she was in the hospital, but he wasn't broken because of it. No. And all the while, you got those detectives that are looking after him too, because they knew about the gun situation, yeah. and they're like, you know, they they have a feeling that he has something to do with it. Yeah, exactly. And there's that little bit of comedy where he runs into the spread of the sliding door. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then ultimately, after finding out, he just ends his mom's life. He's like done, and he, and that's where we get the line where I always thought my life was a tragedy, but now I know it's, it's a, a comedy. comedy right? Yeah. And just does it, does yeah. her in, that's it. And then now he's, it's now gone. he can just be him. Yeah. Um, and he gets a call from, when he, as soon as he gets home, he gets a call from the f- mother, Murphy. Mar- Murray Franklin. Yeah. Well, he, he takes everything out of the fridge. Yeah. And then he goes in the fridge. Yeah, that's true. Which is really weird. I think super he, weird. But even weirder is that scene where he gets the phone call from Murray Franklin. Yeah. He's got his hands down his pants and he's in his underwear in the bed. That was kind of weird. <laughs> That's true. That was weird. Yeah. Um. But he's by himself, and this whole time, like, and so now he gets a call because mm-hmm. he sees that he saw it in the um. Mm-hmm. He saw from the hospital that they were showing it on the Murray Franklin. That's that's where after he kills her, I think, isn't that where he he loses? He gets like sad, so. and and then he goes to Zazie beats his house. Sophie, I think her name is. Yeah, and, and that's when and we in the rain. Yes. Yeah. And oh, I think yeah. that's when we get. That's when we finally realized. Yeah, yeah. That's that, when it shows the flashbacks of like her not actually being there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. That was so genius. Yeah. So now, do you think that he killed her? Because when I went with uh, the guy who was last night, the one theory was the fact that as soon as he left, now apparently there's some blood on him, but it could have been from something else. But there were sirens, uh-huh. and apparently a door was knocking down the hall kind of thing. Because someone might have called the cops or who knows what, what happened kind of thing. She probably called the cops because she's a real person, but their yeah. relationship is fake. Right. So the theory was that he actually killed her and her daughter or just her. Holy fuck. I didn't even think about that. So I was like, Cause he put I was hand, arguing. He put his hand to his head just like yeah, she did in the elevator. Exactly. But this is now at the end. He's fully transitioning to what he's doing. He killed his mother. He's now distraught and in her apartment and that's when you find out the big reveal like you said where it's all fake that their relationship is not non-existent so yeah. after that the, his my Thanos theory is that he killed her because they're sirens that's a good and theory. they stick around and apparently that they knock on the door I didn't hear any of that I didn't pay attention that close but I don't remember I have to see it again. this is where yeah this is where I think he starts he really goes down that road and he gets the call the next day was it the next day? I think it was. It was somewhere around that Cause time. Because that's that's where the theory might fall down. Because if mm-hmm. he did do that, mm-hmm. he wouldn't be in his apartment. They would have yeah. just busted him. 
Like That's there, true. There's no way he would have been. If the cops were there, yeah. they would have cleared out the entire building, yeah. the entire floor. Uh, looked at the floor prints. Yeah, probably would have gone. That's, and that's where I'm a little jail. hazy on the the timeline on where this stands. But it's definitely before, yeah. obviously the the show. The show for sure. And, and he's been practicing for the show now. He's yes. at the point where he's at. Yes. He's in his place and he's practicing killing himself. Yeah. To, by saying a knock knock joke. Yep. And he's practicing. It was actually like kind of cool, like like a, like a little kid would, mm-hmm. where he sets up the curtain. He walks through and he's doing the whole greeting, the people yeah, yeah, waving yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything like that. And then he does his knock knock joke. Yeah. And this was the other great thing is that they're setting it up for him to be like, gonna I'm going to get on the show, which is what I've always wanted to yep. do. And I'm going to kill myself mm-hmm. in front of everybody. Yep. Right. Um, and because he knows that Murray has already said, like, who's laughing now? Like, no one's laughing. And he's been ma- they've been making fun of him because mm-hmm. of that uh, footage that was given to him. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And that's how this all started. Mm-hmm. And that, or that's how this is all starting. And. The investigation's going on. The cops are looking for him and everything. And now we get where now we get the scene where Randall and Gary, yeah, it was Gary, right? Yeah, show up at his place, mm-hmm. and he's putting on his makeup. And this is where he puts the the make the the he, he runs the tongue. paint on his tongue or the makeup on his tongue, yeah, which is really weird, super awkward. But you got the hair. He already did the hair green and the dancing when he does it too. Yeah, oh, it's I was so like, crazy. oh wow! I never paid attention that the hair was green in the in the teaser in the trailers at all, to be honest. But it wasn't even that. It was it, the only yeah. reason. The thing was is that at first I was like, okay, green, green, and I totally forgot, like a fucking idiot, that it was on the mask, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he did it. Yeah. And the in, the other thing what I liked is that his makeup is exactly the same as his original makeup. He's yeah. got the triangles on the top and bottom of his eyes. Yeah. He's got the red smile. It's just enhanced. Yeah. Like it's just it's, he's nailed the his look, yeah. and then he's got that green hair, so it matches that mask. Like mm-hmm. he is, he is becoming that yeah. mask, and and he is fully becoming now the Joker. Yep, but not before he stabs Randall in the fucking face with the scissors, <laughs> and he got re- and he got ready right away. He knew that as soon as anyone was at the door, he's like, "I'm gonna do it." He didn't know that it was Randall, yeah. but the fact that it was was sweet. And yeah. I don't like the way that the blood was on his face. Oh, and yeah. Gary's reaction. Oh, he was losing it. He was in the corner. He's like, of course. Oh, yeah. The hell? Like, he went at him hard. Mm-hmm. And he's just standing. Like, he's just sitting there yeah. with Randall there. He's not laughing hysterically. Mm-hmm. And he, like, Gary tries to run out. He can't reach the door thing. And he's like, Kenny's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I've always liked you, Gary. And then, like, he opens the door and Let's uh, kiss, very kisses spr- him on the forehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or on the top of the head. Oof. Oh, that whole scene was yeah. just like tense. Was wild. But it then he's like, tense. he's off his meds. He's everything. Yeah. Like he's clear. Like, and that's when you like realize like maybe his meds were messing with him even more, or just he's just found his purpose. That's just how he is now. Well, well clearly not because he killed a guy yeah. with no remorse, remorse whatsoever. Yeah. At least when he first killed those three kids or but, those three guys, he ran away in in somewhat yeah. fear until he was doing like yeah. until he went to the bathroom and pretty much had like yeah. uh, an existential experience. Yeah, but he was very in control with the when he when he stabbed when he killed Randall. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. was control. He was methodical. He didn't do a creepy laugh or I don't think he did. did he laugh? That's what I was saying. He didn't laugh. He didn't do yeah. anything. Yeah, so he was very calm, collective. He's like Gary, I like you, and he's messing with him, of course, like playing around. No, on I top think of it. I think he wasn't messing with Gary. No, I like li- he scared him as he went by. Remember. Oh, yes, you're right. So he was messing with him, like being normal. And that's the thing. He's like fully in control now. He's transitioned. He's no longer being off the meds, a lot of that stuff. Like, And his psyche now is very different. You know, he's very focused. He knows what he needs to do. Yeah. And that's just how it is. He has no remorse for killing anybody or at all. Yeah. And that kind of thing. And then which we find out when he actually gets on the show. And and this is where it is. So we get that, hey, whatever, yeah. going down the stairs rebirth mm-hmm. he's ascending down to he's ascending down for gotham to accept him yeah to here's your clown prince of darkness in a way coming even down though from this the throne not, kind of thing. yeah he's coming down from wherever he's coming down yeah and it was interesting like you see those two people in the top or whatever the cops, and then it's yeah. like oh wait the cops oh wait his apartment's right there this totally yeah, tra- yeah. this tracks kind of thing right yeah. but that whole dance on the way down just the way like he is just he is burst out of his cocoon. Yeah. He is now full Joker or mm-hmm. 90% yeah. Joker. Mm-hmm. Right. And I didn't notice this when he said it, when he called him a Joker, when Murray called him a Joker on yeah. on the, the show. On the show. 
Because then that's like, oh, can you call me Joker? Because when yeah. they had it in the trailer, I was just like, eh. Like, I yeah. didn't know how I feel about it. I felt it was a really But yeah, an explanation nose. behind it. Well, in the movie, I'm like, yeah. that's fucking genius. Like, oh, so good. We were missing a part of his chase scene when the cops were going after him. Oh, I was getting to that. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. yeah, but that's where, like, then the music kicks in and it's 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 be- like, it's like beautiful and you yeah. just, it's slow motion and it's just a, like, it's just him moving. Yeah. Then we get to the subway. Yeah. And this is where chasing. shit gets crazy. Oh yeah, he's running away from the cops. They he gets into the the train station, and then realizes everyone's in a mask, and he fits right in because they're all going to protest and yeah. do whatever, and uh, they're gonna go riot. They're gonna go riot and do whatever, and yeah, and the cop ends up killing one of the co- clowns, and then they yeah. beat the shit out of they him. They all go like they're it's done. crazy. Yeah, it didn't last long, and it's just so funny. He just keeps getting away. He just. He, is, he puts on a mask again to brilliant too to blend in because I was thinking of too Drum. like he should just put it up with another mask yeah, yeah sure yeah. shit he grabs the person's yeah. mask which then led to the other guys fighting the, each other yeah I was like what and the then man? he just slinks away and that worked out perfect because that's just like him how yeah. he's just like oh all right, I'm gonna keep going this way <laughs> that he, that's where I saw a little bit of Ledger in that in his performance oh. where he's just like oh I'm gonna just go along do my thing yeah. kind of thing blend in with the crowd and let the chaos happen kind of thing so yeah. that was like i had a little flashback to ledger kind of style where uh he did that kind of thing so Smart. that was pretty sweet and then he finally gets to the show well and not only that first before we get there too yeah. is he gets we see that walk with the cigarette mm. as the cops are running past him mm-hmm. to go because that because that that brawl yeah. opens up from the subway cart yeah. onto the terminal platform mm-hmm. And they're beating the shit. Like, these cops are done, right? And he's just doing that walk, and that walk looks so good. Like, oh, yeah. he, he is just, he, the way that the makeup, the suit looks great. Yeah, I, I actually like the suit. I <laughs> love that suit. Everybody's going to be wearing that suit this Halloween. Yeah, I think it's going to be the top one. <laughs> Fucking, he's walking, he's smoking that cigarette, and he's got swagger. Yeah. Like, this is, this is swagger. Mm-hmm. This is just, I'm fucking here now, mm-hmm. right? Like, Beat the, like essentially letting his minions take care of his work while the like the he walks away kind of thing. Yeah. Right? Then we get to the show. Mm-hmm. We get Mark Marin who was there for again more so cameo. Yeah. De Niro kind of talking to him like, hey, you yeah, know, we're they're friends. They're thing, nice. Or whatever, or whatever. Super nice. Calls him Murray. Where Mark Marin defends him right away. He's like, don't call him Murray. Call Mister Franklin or whatever. And then yeah, Robert yeah. De Niro's like, no, that's okay. Which is actually like as much as he's kind of a jerk to him. Yeah. You know, in that moment, you kind of get, okay, well, you know, he's like any kind of typical yeah. celebrity, because he yeah. is a celebrity, right? Yeah, yeah, But he played the talk show host, a nice one kind of thing, yeah. I think mm-hmm. that before he, they showed that scene where he's got his arms crossed and he's smoking that cigarette, <laughs> yeah, and you hear Murray talking about him on there mm-hmm. and making fun of him. Yeah. I think before that, he was planning on killing himself. I, I think so, too. That was the turning point where he decided... Nope, I'm gonna mess with these guys instead. And that's what was so great about that shot mm-hmm. where they had those two tech people or the two like one's um, a doctor. No, like no, no, no. guess behind behind the curtain. Oh, There's those yeah. two people right next to him running, Yo, the camera, yeah, yeah, watching yeah. the screen or whatever, uh, like the the assistants or whatever like mm-hmm. that. And they look at him mm-hmm. and he's doing this thing and first starts with his left hand. Mm-hmm. And he goes up and he puts that cigarette to his mouth. Yeah, extends his right arm out and stuff, and he's just like. It is, it is, first he's like, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do something else. And mm. then it's almost a, like a full breakout of his cocoon. Mm-hmm. And then I, the interesting thing was, I thought it was going to be a more grander opening when they opened the curtain. Yeah. But it was just enough that you saw his face. Well, and he was still his, dancing until he, he kind of, yeah. Until, right. until, oh. until he actually stepped through, flicked the cigarette. Oh. And then. Amazing. Went around, did his dance, whatever he did. Like he was just like. There he is. I like, yeah, that was. I am here. Yeah. I am here. One hundred percent. Kisses the lady on the face. yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. And then just ignores. The and it was guy. a long kiss too. Like he held it there. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't know, twenty seconds. Yeah, you know. And and then then we get it. Yeah, it's it's like his whole manifesto coming out mm-hmm. while all of Gotham is riding outside. Yeah, like the the world has gone. Like the world of Gotham has gone full Joker, mm-hmm. and he is. It's awkward. It's weird. Mm-hmm. He's going through his journal. He's going through his book. Yeah. Um, people expect you to act as if you don't. That's yeah. the thing. And he confesses mm-hmm. to killing the kids. And 
Then he does his joke, shoots Murray in the fucking face. Yep. And well, he just freaks out. He's like, this is what happens when it. you mess with people this much. Like, this is what yeah. happens kind of thing. And it's like, That's what it is. Like, it's like you've been sitting here up top yeah. judging all of us. Mm-hmm. You've been judging me. Uh, Thomas Wayne is judging the people of Gotham. Like yeah. the, the, the people in the underground of Gotham. Yeah. In the narrow. I would assume that's the narrows, wouldn't it be? Yeah, it must, the, be, like, it must be. I think it was called the narrows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I remember that being the narrows from the Batman Begins, where yeah. that's where most of the underground resides. That makes right? sense. Like Falcone was running so within the narrows. with this scene, I think this is where everyone kind of branded the Joker as a dangerous movie. You know, they he said, shoots him in the face because of what he says before. He's like, "This is what happens when you bully people to the to this mm. breaking point, and they're just going to shoot you, and this is what's going to happen," kind of thing. Right. And so, therefore, it's kind of like a mimic of what's been happening in the states, all so the school shooting stuff like that. These kids get bullied to the well, end the, degree. The, let's say to to be clear, the school shootings happen before, but the idea of pushing someone to the brink. I get it. Yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. They're they're. Yeah. People are going to look at it and say, oh, they're glorifying it in their own way. Because that's how people think these days. They're going to look at this movie and they're going to pick, pinpoint this thing to say, okay, well, this is exactly what happens to these kids and stuff. But yeah, obviously the shootings happen after the fact or before, before the fact. fact. Yeah. And But it, but it's the yeah. idea of getting This, this is where it got branded as dangerous, yeah. right? People well, the, who saw it and said like that and the critics yeah. and certain people and whatever. Oh, is this dangerous kind of thing? It's like, no, it's not. Just be smart. Yeah, I think what it but, is is... In regards to the Columbine shootings, I heard somebody reading some excerpts from their actual like, their their they had a like almost like a um, a suicide letter. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. And these kids were referencing Cain and Abel, mm-hmm. or referencing Cain from the Bible. And yeah. How and Cain was the 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 son the original. The, the, well, he was the original sinner, and he was the one that was pushed aside. Nothing he did ever appeased God. Mm-hmm. Abel was great, and c- that's why Cain killed him, right? Yeah. Out of pure jealousy. Yeah. And they were referencing that, and how it's it's almost like yeah, this is what happens. Mm-hmm. Same with in the Dark Knight is like this is what what uh, Gotham has done. It's made us crazy, right? Yeah. I think the Joker said something like that. Yeah. Um. And it's a sentiment shared by a lot of people mm-hmm. now. The thing about this movie is that I didn't find it glorifying at all. No. And I didn't find it that it's like, oh, this movie's going to cause people to do this. Mm-hmm. I would say not necessarily that scene. That scene for sure. I would also say that the rioting that was happening while the rich people were yeah. inside. Yeah. Like, it's like a socialist wet dream. Yeah. Honestly, like any, any person that's for all equality and the rich are the worst people in the world, it yeah. was kind of like that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you guys aren't, like you guys are riding and destroying things in the streets, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's but yeah, there's that. There, it's like it's all this mix of things, and it's mm-hmm. that's it's this boiling point. Yeah, that, yeah. and he's reached that boiling point. Yeah. His his cauldron is overrun with mm-hmm. fucking boiling water all over the place, and he's in and his not necessarily his will, but the will of the people is going to be realized yeah. just as much as he has. Mm-hmm. It's. They're just rallying behind the what it what it meant and what he did kind well, of thing. And like uh, like Bruce Wayne said in Batman Begins, a man can be broken, a symbol can cannot. Yeah. So now the clown has is become the, a symbol. Yeah. The, yeah. La, the 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 clown is the the one that everyone laughs at, yeah. not with. Mm-hmm. You laugh at a clown. And it's that whole thing of that's why your life is a comedy. Yeah. And it's like, look who's laughing now. Mm-hmm. And so the scene happens. I'm He's, surprised the one thing with that is yeah. that he didn't actually shoot anybody else. He didn't care to. He just no. shot Murray. That's it. Yeah. Went up to the camera. That's life. <laughs> and, it cut. And, and it cut off before he could even yeah. finish life. But that was yeah. brilliant. Oh, yeah. And we see Gotham as being fucked. Yeah, like he's they're, just they're looking at it, and he's just looking at it. He's like, "This is awesome. I love this." It. Yeah, because in he, his mind, I think it's, he realized it's all him. it. Yeah. Well, and whether it was it was him for yeah. sure, but. There's also that part of it where he's like, I'm responsible for all of this. But really, yeah. he was, again, kind of a linchpin. So, yes, he's fully responsible. Yeah. But he thinks that this is for me. Call it he was the catalyst to get yes. it to this point. It, it, yeah. it, it maybe his, his act eventu- was. In yeah. eventuality, it would have gotten to that, let's say. Yeah. But in the form of backing to this symbol like we talked about, the clown, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have happened that way. Well, the other thing to consider is if... So, he shot those kids. Okay? Yes. If Thomas Wayne never called them clowns, then maybe none of this would have happened. Yeah. Maybe if he was more sympathetic to the idea that 
the rich felt like they can go wherever they want, treat people the way that they wanted, yeah. and someone for the first time in a while responded yeah. back. Well, and that's the thing. They, they, I don't know if they, I never, can't remember exactly, but like, did they expect it? They just assumed that this was just a straight up murder because they were rich kids, not because, oh, what if they were being assholes and they just, you know, not deserve to die, but well, let's I say would, they pushed this guy to the brink. But even then, if they had no yeah. weapons on them and the other person shot him with a For gun, sure, then, yeah. all, then you've got this thing of like, well, you know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know the rules of what justifiable homicide would be in a situation like that. Yeah, because he was getting his ass kicked. He could have died. Yeah, but, I mean, fuck, he probably has internal bleeding. His mm-hmm. fucking they kick his head in or whatever. Yeah, right. Um, slow motion through Gotham. Yeah, all of a sudden a fucking semi or a ambulance tra- ambulance truck. Right. Yeah. Takes the thing out. Yeah. And they pull him out like he's Christ himself. <laughs> exactly. Like, and they place him right on top of the. Yeah, the car, and while this is happening, mm-hmm. we see Thomas and Martha Wayne coming out of that theater. Yep, and simultaneously, as the Joker arises, the first seeds of Batman are yeah. now arising. Now, see, the idea of Joker, sorry, arises. yeah. So with that, it seemed like there was always a plan to do so. Like he was always the target because you see the guys that knocked out the thing and brought him out. They went right away to get to work and wait for thomas wayne and see i don't i didn't see that because it was just one guy that happened to notice them oh was it one guy okay i seem to think and he saw him and he yelled hey thomas wayne or whatever okay something like that i thought it was the same guys for some reason but Mm. well i think it was the same guy that pulled him out because it looked similar but i think that it was just happenstance that that one they ran into they were alone in the thing like oh that's perfect yeah what are the chances (laughs) exactly and and they even showed the beads the beads and then just the blood spot on his face, which is this is where yeah. the dark side of it all comes out. Is that this is this is that evil burning yeah. from underneath? Yeah. This is what's coming out of it. This is how bad yeah. things can get. And because if Thomas Wayne never said that about them, then maybe again this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, at least in this story. Right? Yeah, I kind of wish that they didn't show us show them getting shot. Mm. I wish what they would have. How done. many more times are we gonna see? That Honestly, happen? yeah, and the beads too. Like, it's yeah. like they took a thing from Snyder, and it's like, well, yeah. let's add the beads in here, right? Yeah. Like the, well, here's one thing I did read about this: is that it it flips the script a little bit. Is the fact that Batman created Joker, like Batman's essence or something like that, created the idea of the Joker? Because the Joker didn't wasn't pre. Batman, technically, right? It was well. In this, the do, idea of the Joker is actually. You mean the comics or regular? The comics or? and most of the lore. The Joker comes out of. They've almost been Batman. the same age. Exactly. And so they kind of won. they rise up together. Yeah. yeah. This kind of flips it and says Batman is a product of what the Joker became. Oh. So that's what I read about is that it flips it a little bit because what we know. Smart. I believe so. Don't quote me on this, but I be, that's what I got from the one article I read is the fact is the saying that. Um, this kind of flips what we know of the Joker uh, responding to the Batman. Yeah. And this is now the Batman responding to the Joker. Right. Because again, Ledger said, this is how crazy you've made Gotham. Exactly. So, or how he's crazy he's made Gotham. Right? Exactly. So this is now huh. flipping it. This is an, That's a very interesting theory if it's correct that that's how the other lore goes by. And that's how come we know. Because we've never known the Joker before Batman. It's been Batman and the Joker. Yeah, I think the closest thing would be in the Killing Joke, which, yeah, um, yeah we, I mean, that again, that would be the closest yeah. thing to a biography of the Joker. Yeah, that's brilliant. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I think the only thing is not if they didn't have it. Yeah, that at all. They wouldn't have um, it. And then just showed the guy turning the corner, hearing a gunshot, and then all the then going and just showing Bruce walk, looking over his parents. Yeah, and you would have known. Like just boom, boom. You already know. Yeah. You already know what's going to happen anyways because we've seen this told a bunch of times. Yeah. Like it's crazy how much they just they just yeah. need to show it. But I yeah. guess it's like this is how close mm-hmm. in this world. This is how close. This is this is causality. Yeah, exactly. Right? But like so, Arthur. Or Joker is now on top of that. Everyone's cheering for him because mm-hmm. he's the he's the guy now. Yeah, all of this is because of him. Mm-hmm. And then he does that thing where he wipes the blood across his face and makes a smile Dude. and dances. It's nuts. That and was then he dances one. and everyone's cheering for him and yeah. he's just like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, no, like it's like, "What are you?" Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. And then I don't know how I feel. A part of me loves, loves, loves the way that this ended with him in that asylum with the yeah. new social worker, or like the, yeah. not the social worker, but the person working at the yeah. asylum. Yeah. Because he's captured and everything. Like yeah. That. He kills her. 
Yep. For sure, because we see it. Yeah. But I thought it lasted too long when they showed him running left and yeah. running right. Yeah. I, like, it, it just would have been great because he dances, he does his dance or yeah. whatever, and they could have just ended it there. Mm-hmm. Instead of having one orderly chase him, you'd think there'd be yeah. more orderlies chasing him. Mm-hmm. But that line where he says, he's like, do you, you want to know a joke? Do you want me to tell you a joke? He's like, never mind, you wouldn't get it. No, I think she asked what's so funny. What, oh, are, you what's laugh- a, oh, what are you laughing you about? Won't, you won't get it's it. It's like, you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it. So, and then they showed Bruce, because this is what Anthony had said. Uh, they showed Bruce after that? This is Anthony's favorite line, or favorite scene. He says... I've been looking for the fucking scene at the end where he says, want to hear a joke? And then it shows Bruce in the alley and he says, never mind, you wouldn't get it. Yeah. He's like, that's honestly maybe my favorite Batman scene. He's <laughs> like, I also love when Murray said 72 policemen are in a hospital because of what you did. And he just smiled and nods. I know so proudly. Oh, yeah. smart. Yes, I forgot about that too. So some theory out there also says that that final scene of him in the asylum potentially goes against the whole movie only in the what fact does? that the last scene could be seen as his fantasy because he's in this asylum he could have thought of all of this so apparently this is being left open to interpretation by Todd Phillips himself it's the fact was everything you saw oh real God. right or was it just a story or joke he was thinking in his head while he was talking to the social worker? So the only time we saw him in the asylum was when he was in that room bashing his head up against the wall. Yes. And it's out uh, the window. Yeah. And it seemed like he was this version of Arthur Fleck. Yes. So then, wait a minute. This seems like a- Wait a minute. So then the social worker he was meeting with the first time was actually that social I worker. I think it's the same chick. So it could in, it, it wasn't the same lady, but it yeah. was it was the same looking lady. Yeah, she had short hair. Yep, uh, she was looking at him sternly. Mm-hmm. It was in a room. He was across from her. He was smoking a cigarette, sitting the same way. All of that. Oh my! Because then he tells, and then he tells the knock knock joke, and then he kills her. Oh my god! So, and some are no, seeing. He, said, it, he doesn't say knock knock, does he? Does he? I think he says knock knock at the end. I don't know. I, don't I can't remember. Fuck, I can't I remember. See it again. Holy shit! So that was a, I was like, holy crap! Now they said it in the way that it somewhat betrays what you saw because what you saw was pretty brilliant mm-hmm. in itself. Mm-hmm. So now creating this potential of being fake thing, it's like the it's like the uh, what they were gonna do with Breaking Bad, where they were gonna say it was all a dream sequence, like a dream sequence. Yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> this being a dream sequence would almost betray it all. I like the fact that it's probably post he's been caught and whatever, mm-hmm. but is it plausible that he got caught right away and went to the asylum? Well, if for him to say you wouldn't get it and then they show that Bruce is standing yeah. over his dead parents, then clearly that happened because but, obviously we know that they get shot. Potentially, or he's thinking about it because but, he's seen Bruce. But it doesn't change the fact that it already happened. He didn't know that though. Did he actually know that they died. Did he see them and, and you know, and be happy about that? Now, he might have already thought, I want Thomas Wayne dead. Right. And might as well kill his parents and leave Bruce an orphan and leave him whatever. So maybe the, in, in his mind, he's probably thinking that would be a funny joke of his parents. Because again, his psyche is so messed right now. He, he, he justifies the deaths and has no remorse for it. So killing this guy who... Uh, and it doesn't seem like who it, broke his whole world in yeah. a way. Basically, gave him the thing that your mom was crazy. This is all a lie. You're nothing. Blah blah blah, and beats the shit out of him, kind of thing. So, again, crazy, crazy theory. And apparently, again, Todd Phillips is leaving it open for interpretation at this point. But it could all just be uh, Fugazi, as it Fugazi, is. Fugazi, Fugazi. It's a wazi. It's a woozy. Sir. <laughs> exactly. Gosh. And now, like we said, it ended with they're in talks for a sequel. That's what I yeah like I said I'm not on board for that. I don't yeah. I, I mean, a bar me would love to see more of this, but at the same time, it's like yeah. oh, it was so good. I I don't think it's it warrants one. I don't think it needs one. I think it's perfect as is. Now, to play devil's advocate, th- then it wouldn't make sense. This is the '70s. Let's say late '70s. Yep. The next the Batman is supposed to be in the '90s. Do you think it's all been a gay, like say that all oh, this none of this is going to tie to the Batman series? You know what? I don't think it's a Batman should. movie. The 90s one that they're going to create, right? I don't think it should only yeah. because... Okay. The only reason I say it shouldn't. Yeah. 
this is not a comic book movie. No, not at all. This almost, aside from the word Gotham, mm-hmm. the name Thomas Wayne, mm-hmm. seeing Thomas Wayne's son, which yeah. we know is Bruce Wayne, um, it has nothing to do with anything. It's just this film about a guy that ends up becoming realized through yeah. this persona and the world around True. him that 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 rallies together behind this ideal. Mm-hmm. Very much like how the people of Gotham rally behind Batman as an ideal. Yeah. And I think because it lives in that world, mm-hmm. it cannot live in a world where a guy in a mask flying around mm-hmm. on like bat in Batmobiles and stuff. Yeah. I don't know if those two can coexist. Possibly not. The only way I can see it is if they show the copycat that yeah. is then the Joker. Yeah. And then that's the one that ends up meeting him. But even then, it yeah. spawns from this from this film that is so grounded in reality, mm-hmm. it's seemingly, aside from a couple of names, has nothing to do with the lore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's a, that's interesting. I'm going to have to think about that theory that you just said because that mm-hmm. fucked me up a little bit. I can't remember if there's either Screen Rant or someone else that mentioned it, but... Fuck. It's all up to interpretation now and again because Todd Phillips is kind of keeping his mouth shut about it. He's like, good for him. Let everyone kind of think what they want. It could be all fake. It could have been, no, he got caught and eventually went back to the asylum. Right. Who knows? This is the best explanation. I posted it on um, my Facebook. This is from Josh Brolin. Some of you have already heard this, and I want to read this because I think it's it's the best way that and that I could think of and by mm-hmm. that, sorry the, the best way to explain this movie at least for me in the way that it's like yep this is it because i don't i can't articulate this way no so this is from josh brolin's instagram oh yeah to appreciate joker i believe you have to have either gone through something traumatic in your lifetime and i believe most of us have or understand somewhere in your psyche what true compassion is which usually comes from having gone through something traumatic unfortunately an example of dangerous compassion would be to say, make a film about the fragility of the human psyche and make it so raw, so brutal, so balletic, balletic, that by the time you leave the theater, you not only don't want to hurt anybody, but you desperately want an answer and a solution to the violence and mental health issues that have spun out of control around us. This film makes you hurt, and only in pain do we ever want to change. It's all in the irony of trauma, A fine line between the resentment of wanting to hurt society back for raping you of a decent life, for not protecting you, and accepting what feels like alien feelings with softening to those others who seem freakish in our era of judgment and digital damnation. Like kids in middle school, man, they can just be mean for no reason. And sometimes those awful little clicky kids breed an evil in someone that rages much later. When everyone pretends we are all back to normal, when we all thought it had just manned up and gone away. We have a habit of hating and ostracizing and dividing and sweeping our problems under the rug. Joker is simply lifting the rug and looking underneath it. Nothing more, nothing less. It's there. That was Josh Brolin. Mm-hmm. Fuck, what a great explanation. Just know, there, I, like, I, don't, I don't have much else. I mean, this is, this is a character study. This is... Um, it's touching on mental health issues in a time period that had no idea what mental health issues were. Mm-hmm. Now, all we talk about are mental health issues. True. It's talking about a, like you mentioned, a society that does ostracize. Not just strange people, mm-hmm. but everybody. If you don't agree with me, I then hate you. Yeah. That seems to be the sentiment. Mm-hmm. I believe that that tide is turning because enough people have gone through a phase in their lives that they realize that that hatred that they had... Mm-hmm hasn't gotten them anywhere. Yeah. And some of these really clicky groups end up turning on each other if you don't believe the ideal that yeah. exists. So I think that there is a tide turning. It's just taking some time. But I think movies like this, while some people are branding it like a, a call for violence or something, mm-hmm. it does show the ugly side. There are no heroes here. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. There's nothing charming about any of this there's nothing happy about it it's misery Mm -hmm. and it's what misery can lead to it's it's wild it's crazy i I don't know what do you have 
Not a whole lot else. That's it? What? Come on, much, man. I don't know. We covered it all. It's pretty great. Oh, shit. Yeah. What else did I have? The other thing is, I, I'm, I'm torn because I don't know mm-hmm. if I would give an Oscar this year to Leonardo DiCaprio or Joaquin Phoenix. What did Leo do again? In What's Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, that's right. Dude. On it, I haven't seen What's Upon a Time in Hollywood. Dude. Unbelievable. But uh, I think Joaquin is probably a more front runner, in my opinion. Again, not having seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but for yourself, are you saying it's like a deadlock? I'm saying that between those two, I have no idea who to pick because those are my two uh, favorite performances outside of Thor and Endgame. I thought Thor and Endgame was uh, like just amazing. I don't know what it was. It's man. funny though, the but Marvel's not going after any no nominations for actors. No, uh, but all technical. It, I, I I honestly believe between the two, I I wouldn't know because both of them like. I think though that Joaquin should get it because this is the fucking role of a light. Like this is a fucking yeah. role, man. Mm-hmm. This is one of those like. This is one of those genre bending situations. This is yeah. one of those things where you had you had no idea what to expect. Yeah, and in my case, it exceeded every expectation, mm-hmm. and it made me feel like shit. Yeah, like in in such a way, like I felt so much in watching this film. Yeah, I felt so much in like. I I didn't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, yeah. just to, just just the visually the the way that mm-hmm. it would progress, the way that Arthur Fleck's character was, the way his world was presented, everything, yeah. and all of that. Even if it is, even if it is what you said, mm-hmm. where this all this whole thing may or may not be betrayed by the fact that this was all uh, in his mind, and he was actually in that asylum, and he never left. Yeah. Think about the type of mind that creates this. You know, they say that your room, for instance, your bedroom represents Mm -hmm. your mind. So Mm -hmm. if you have a very messy bedroom, Mm -hmm. you have a very messy mind. And it's all all over the place and you can be scattered. Whereas somebody who kind of has their stuff together, for the most part, you can go to the room and kind of piece together what their psyche is like. Mm -hmm. If this is what he created in his mind, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, and that alone might yeah. be like and so brilliant to extend on that. Even if he did create that in his mind, <clears throat> what if he then escaped to then fulfill what he was supposed to be? Mm-hmm. That's so. Too. Then, then he is the real Joker. Yeah, and he's given, and he has, he has given himself the power to carry this out. Yeah, very interesting. Ooh. Fucking wild. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so needless to say, we both loved it. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I would say that it's hard to compare it to Ledger because I know everyone's going to do it. Yeah. I would almost say because they're so different. Yeah. They're not even they're not even the same. Like, I don't even think that this is, again, I'm still subscribing that this isn't the real Joker. Okay. So I don't even know if that's a safe comparison. Okay. The only thing I had mentioned to somebody is that Ledger did so much with so much little screen time, mm-hmm. whereas Joaquin <clears throat> had an entire movie. Yeah. And I don't know if if you value those the same or differently. Yeah. So the other thing with uh, to com- by comparison, call it as they're the sa- they're the same character, and you're comparing it side by side. Mm-hmm. The the point that we like this is him being creating who he is, and not so and being the person with Ledger's character. You're seeing him full on be Joker with his counterpart Batman, and yes. so that interaction gets us a little bit more excited and therefore we are a little bit more invested into it and enjoy it more. Plus he did an amazing job regardless, mm-hmm. but you have those interactions with those characters that help enhance it. And because he has a goal mm-hmm. here, he doesn't have anything. Mm-hmm. He is just rolling with the punches and then, Oh, it clicks that he's doing what he's doing. And it, it just does, it just happens actually more. So he doesn't do anything. So other, to shoot those guys. He shoots those guys and stuff, but to create the bigger chaos that, would be a Joker move and wanted to do that, in which we saw in the Gotham series happens all the time. Um, he stumbled upon it. He stumbled upon it. Just happened out of it was a pure, perfect accident. He didn't realize after that he was exactly. the architect of this madness. Whereas the Ledger's Joker creates everything. He's he's methodical. As much as he is mad, he is also methodical, and therefore has that counterpart and in the interactions he has and creates that thing, which is why. Personally, I still hold Ledger's higher only for that, but like it's 
neck and neck and a breath below kind of thing, only because of what we're given more with Ledger. Well, and I, I guess the the unfair comparison is the fact that and I already mentioned it, is that this yeah. may not actually be Joker. So you're not even comparing the same characters. True. The other thing is, this is the first time, mm-hmm. at least on the big screen or at least between the two, where. Ledger, we meet. He's fully realized. Yeah, he is Joker. Yeah, that first heist might have been his first outing, mm-hmm. but he is fully formed, one hundred percent Joker. Yeah. By the end of this movie, mm-hmm. by the time he kills his first person, mm-hmm. maybe he didn't actually kill. Maybe he didn't even kill the guys on the train. Who else, like if this is all in his head, right? Yeah. Regardless. He just reaches full Joker at the end of the movie where we meet full Joker in the beginning of the Dark Knight. Yeah. Every other... And then Jack Nicholson's might be the only one mm-hmm. where he turns into the Joker because he falls into the vat. Right. And then he, so, but the thing is... Leto he does was that too. Kind but... of... Yeah, but he... he no, he falls into the vat with Harley just to kind of take her in there. Oh, he was yeah, already yeah. Joker by the time Oh, that yeah, that's right. He creates her, yeah. Whereas Nicholson, he falls into the vat, then he comes back as Joker, but he's right. just kind of an evil version of his his self already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just this seems like something that cannot be compared because by the time you finish this movie, mm-hmm. he's just there. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You watch the seeds that have already been planted, and, and then been they've been they've been growing for years, and mm-hmm. then as we enter this movie. We are starting to see those seeds kind of growing, yeah. right? And then by the end of the movie, they're grown, mm-hmm. but then it's done and then it's over. Yeah, interesting. So that's what make that's why it makes it so difficult. Yeah, but either then either way, even just as a movie alone that has nothing to do with the Joker, this is a really good movie. Yeah, great performances by mm-hmm. everybody. Um, I'm I'm more curious to see are they if. Joaquin or Todd Phillips are going to remain silent on everything and not discuss post, like after a certain period of time, and they can openly discuss a little few, you know, key yeah. things and answer us a question. There's like, what does this scene like? What is this about? What does this explain? Or, or they can they actually answer the question again? Because if it's a one off, why does it matter if you give us the what your thoughts are? It's on like it? Inception, where I don't I don't even think Christopher Nolan even said if the 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 thing the drops. Thing drops or is not, he right? in the yeah. real world or the fate? Yeah, but let it live there. That's yeah. what I. That's what I really hope. That's Basically, why I'm not really. Well, he's I think a second one for that reason. Yeah, that's fair. It's just let it let it be and let it just let us fuck around with it because then we're gonna be like, wait a minute, but we know his parents died but he doesn't know that his parents got killed because he was on top of the car so how does he know that that's the joke or maybe we know that that's the joke she wouldn't get it but we get it because we know like it's this whole thing where it's like no that's what brilliant filmmaking is yeah and honestly like i i i had mentioned it on the show this i said this could potentially be the one that puts todd phillips over the top and this is his movie that Mm -hmm. really breaks him out as like Oh shit! He just doesn't do raunchy comedies or cringe comedies, as they call it. Yeah, he can fucking direct, mm-hmm. and you know what? He can fucking direct, and we always knew Joaquin Phoenix can act, and yeah, it's it's a it's a wild wild ride. So mm-hmm. um, I hope we did it justice in this spoiler review. Yeah, we're a little rocky at the start, but that's yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it's because every because the thing is, there's so much you're trying to piece it, and yeah. I, I think. It definitely helped once we got to the crescendo of it all, and that's that's, that's where really it, where it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, no. but yeah, if you've seen it, send us uh, send us your comments. Arturo already gave us a review. You can see that on our recent episode, "The Wokes on mm-hmm. You," episode sixty six. This week, I'm gonna be releasing, as I mentioned, "Life in Hip Hop," a new deep dive with my friend Robert. But yeah, send us an email at the F-words, Sorry, send us an email at the F-word podcast at gmail dot com. Let us know what you thought about it. You can also tweet me. You can also find me on Instagram at the F Word Podcast. You can send us a reply there. Say what, how you thought about it. Um, yeah, I, like I said, we don't review, we don't score things anymore. So we just mm-hmm. say this: you got to fucking see it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty special. It's pretty amazing. Super fucking depressing. Yeah. There's no glory here mm-hmm. for anybody. Um, so yeah, that's our thoughts. That's our spoiler review of Todd Phillips, the Joker. I'm G. I'm Bass. And we're out.